The miraculous aspect of the life of Anne Catherine Emmerich is that for years she fed only on the Eucharist. Anne Catherine Emmerich was born in Germany on September 8, 1774, into a family of farmers and began to work very early. Later on, a religious vocation matured and she asked to be admitted into several monasteries, but she was always rejected because she was very poor and had no dowry. Only when she was 28 years old, she was accepted into the monastery of Attenuburg, where she joined the monastic life with fervor, always ready to take the most difficult tasks. One night while she was praying, Jesus appeared and offered her a crown of roses and a crown of thorns. She chose the crown of thorns, and Jesus put the crown of thorns on her head. Suddenly, around her forehead appeared the first stigmata. Later on, after another apparition of Jesus, the wounds also appeared in her hands, feet, and side. In 1811, the monastery of Ottenburg was suppressed. Anne Catherine Emmerich was forced to abandon the monastery in which she lived because it was being appropriated by the government. In that period, her health declined and the mystical experiences increased. Anne Catherine found hospitality as a housekeeper for a priest, but soon she became ill and was bedridden. Dr. Wessner, a young doctor, visited her and remained very impressed by her stigmata. During the 11 years that followed, he became her friend and faithful assistant, having also a diary in which he would transcribe her visions. Meanwhile, the nun had practically stopped eating. A little bit of water and the consecrated host was enough to keep her alive for many years. She was very devoted to and wrote many pages about the Holy Eucharist. Quote, My desire for the Holy Eucharist was so fervent and irresistible that, at night, I would often leave my cell to enter the church. Often I would genuflect and prostrate towards the Blessed Sacrament with extended arms, and sometimes I would enter into ecstasy." Unquote. Anne Catherine always joined her suffering with that of Jesus and offered it for the redemption of men. The most famous biographer of Anne Catherine was the German writer Clemens von Brentano, who wrote all of her visions. Brentano compiled thousands of pages about the Blessed, many of which must still be published. In one of the most famous passages, he wrote, quote, Anne Catherine stands like a cross at the side of the street to indicate the right direction to the faithful. That which he says is brief but simple, full of depth, warmth, and life. I understand everything. Always happy, affectionate, dignified, and marvelous. Always ill, agonizing, but at the same time delicate and fresh, chaste, tired, lucid. To be seated at her side meant to occupy the most beautiful place in the world. Unquote. I also promised you the story of the Blessed Virgin's house, as told by Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich and mentioned by Carlo Acutis, that was discovered in Turkey. And I'll get you started here, but finish it in the next video. Then I'll continue in the next video with another house that is connected to Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich. It's the house of Nazareth, in which Mary was born, raised, and is the site of the Annunciation in her room. Many believe that the house was transported first to Dalamptia, modern-day Croatia, in 1291, then to the hilltop town of Loreto, Italy, three years later, in 1294, in pieces by ship. Many others believe the story, as Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich tells it, that it was picked up and flown there by several angels. To whet your appetite for the house in Turkey, it was mentioned by Anne Catherine and dictated to her biographer, Clemens von Brentano. The house was actually discovered twice, once in 1881 because its description was pieced together by a French priest. But his story was not believed. Ten years later, two Lazarus missionaries rediscovered the house based upon the same details provided by Anne Catherine's descriptions. In both cases, there was not much of the house left, but a nun was appointed in charge of the reconstruction, and it is now a tourist destination. This is the house in the mountains of Turkey that is associated with Our Lady and St. John the Apostle, in which it is rumored that they lived after the crucifixion.